Welcome to Astronomy Daily, your go-to podcast for all the latest updates in the world of space and astronomy. I'm your host, Anna. Today, we have some fascinating news stories lined up for you. We'll dive into groundbreaking research on black holes and why certain types known as Kugelblitze might be impossible. We'll also explore the latest on the James Webb Space Telescope and its potential to see galaxies beyond the visible universe's horizon. In other news, we'll cover the technical challenges faced by the Gaia Space Telescope and the remarkable efforts to overcome them. Lastly, we'll discuss an exciting new ESA mission focused on studying the asteroid Apophis during its close flyby of Earth. Let's dive in. We'll start with a groundbreaking study on black holes known as Kugelblitze. Recent research challenges the theory that these extreme objects formed solely from light can exist. Scientists delved into quantum mechanics and general relativity to understand why these objects can't form, even under the most extreme conditions. Traditionally, we understand black holes as massive objects that form from the collapse of massive stars. However, the idea of a Kugelblitz proposes a black hole formed from concentrating a vast amount of light energy. In theory, light, despite having no mass, carries energy, which can warp space-time and potentially form a black hole. Physicists Jose Polo Gomez and Alvaro Alvarez Dominguez examined this idea more closely. They found that the Schwinger effect, a phenomenon where intense electromagnetic fields convert energy into matter, would occur at such high levels of concentrated light. This conversion disrupts the concentration of light energy needed to form a Kugelblitz. Their calculations show that even with the most intense lasers on Earth, we wouldn't come close to the level of energy required. This revelation puts constraints on some cosmological models and reinforces that black holes from light, or Kugelblitze, are impossible in our universe. It's a fascinating intersection of quantum mechanics and relativity that provides new insights into the formation of black holes and the nature of our universe. This study underscores the importance of integrating quantum effects into our understanding of gravitational phenomena and opens the door for further research on how quantum matter interacts with gravity truly a remarkable leap in our quest to understand the cosmos. Next up, let's talk about the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWS. This groundbreaking observatory has been a hot topic since its launch, and for good reason. It's equipped with some of the most advanced scientific instruments ever placed in space. Recently, there's been growing curiosity over whether JWST can actually see galaxies that lie beyond the edge of our currently observable universe. Now, why is this such a big deal? Well, the observable universe is limited by the speed of light and the age of the universe itself. Essentially, there's a cosmic horizon beyond which we can't see, simply because light from those regions hasn't had time to reach us yet. However, JWST's exceptional sensitivity to infrared light allows it to peer farther back in time and space than any telescope before it. Infrared light can penetrate cosmic dust clouds that usually obscure younger galaxies. This means JWST could potentially detect some of the earliest galaxies that formed after the Big Bang. It's not just the distance that's exciting. It's the chance to study these primordial galaxies in unprecedented detail. What were they like? How did they evolve? The answers could reshape our understanding of the universe's formative years. Moreover, JWST's observations could provide critical data on dark matter and dark energy, the mysterious forces that constitute most of the universe. By observing the distribution and behavior of galaxies at the edge of the observable universe, scientists hope to gain insights into these enigmatic components. In essence, the James Webb Space Telescope isn't just another tool for stargazing. It's a time machine aimed at the cosmos. And as we embark on this new era of astronomical discovery, the possibilities are as vast and boundless as space itself. In other news, the ESA's Gaia Space Telescope encountered some significant challenges in its 11th year of operation. Initially designed to precisely measure the positions and motions of distant stars, Gaia has been an invaluable tool for astronomers. However, its mission faced a couple of unexpected hurdles recently. First, the telescope was struck by a micrometeoroid, which pierced through its protective shielding. This intrusion allowed a tiny sliver of sunlight to disrupt its sensitive onboard sensors. As if that wasn't enough, Gaia soon experienced a camera malfunction. One of its charge-coupled devices, or CCDs, crucial for converting light into electrical signals, failed. 
This coincided with a solar storm that bombarded Earth's atmosphere with intense radiation, possibly overwhelming Gaia's decade-old electronics. These setbacks led to Gaia transmitting gigabytes of junk data back to Earth. Yet, the mission team at ESA was quick to spring into action. Engineers adjusted the telescope's software to eliminate false star detections and fine-tuned its optics. Remarkably, these adjustments have resulted in Gaia now sending back better quality data than ever before. Despite these challenges, Gaia remains operational and continues to provide valuable data. It's a testament to the dedication and ingenuity of the ESA team, who managed to turn a potential disaster into an opportunity for improvement. However, Gaia has already surpassed its original mission lifespan. And while it's still going strong, we are reminded that all good things must eventually come to an end. Wrapping up our news, ESA's Ramsey's mission is gearing up for an exciting journey. Set for launch in 2028, this mission will rendezvous with the asteroid 99942 Apophis as it makes an exceptionally close flyby of Earth in 2029. This flyby is truly a once-in-a-lifetime event, where Apophis will come as close as 32,000 kilometers from our planet, visible to billions of people across Europe, Africa, and parts of Asia. So why is ESA so keen on studying Apophis? Well, this mission offers an incredible opportunity not just for planetary defense, but for advancing our understanding of asteroid composition and behavior. Apophis, roughly the size of a cruise ship, will be significantly affected by Earth's gravitational forces as it swings by. These forces can alter its rotational state and possibly trigger surface changes like landslides. Ramses aims to capture these transformations in real time, providing a comparative before and after snapshot that will be invaluable for scientists. By closely observing Apophis, researchers hope to gather crucial data on how asteroids respond to external forces. This information is not just academic. It's vital for developing strategies to defend Earth from any future celestial threats. Besides, understanding the composition, structure, and surface features of asteroids like Apophis can enlighten us about the conditions in the early solar system, offering insights into its formation and evolution. Interestingly, Ramses won't be the only spacecraft studying Apophis. NASA has directed its OSIRIS-REx spacecraft toward the asteroid as well, renaming it OSIRIS Apex. Although it will arrive a month after Apophis's close approach, having two probes studying the asteroid will provide a comprehensive data set. This joint effort between ESA and NASA exemplifies the international collaboration required for planetary defense. The Ramses mission marks a significant milestone in our ability to react quickly to celestial hazards. It's built upon the lessons learned from previous missions like HERA and DART, demonstrating that humanity can indeed deploy a rapid response reconnaissance mission. This capability will be crucial should we ever need to deflect an incoming asteroid. So, stay tuned as ESA prepares for this groundbreaking mission, an endeavor that promises not only to advance science, but also to enhance our planetary defense strategies. That's it for today's episode of Astronomy Daily. Remember, you can visit our website at astronomydaily.io to sign up for our free daily newsletter and stay updated with the latest in space and astronomy news. You can catch up on all our back episodes there as well. I'm your host, Anna, thanking you for tuning in. Be sure to find us on social media as Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Catch you in the next episode.